Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Unplugged Woodworkers podcast. So, what have I been up to? A little bit more than previous weeks for obvious reasons because I'm home at the moment. Um, it's it's still not as much as I would have liked. That's due to the weather. Um, have been trying to get things recorded. Um, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback, um, a lot of encouragement, and basically a lot of people are starting to ask us to do things, which which I think is very cool. And um, I appreciate all the nice messages and donations and whatever else I've had. Um, it's it's very 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 much appreciated. So um, today I managed to grab a couple of hours. I've I've been really busy as well. Um, Today I was uh, doing a, a course uh, for half the day, so I managed to grab a few hours on the afternoon. Um, so I got a few bits and bobs done on the folding shelf units. That's like uh, it's modelled off um, some campaign furniture. Um, if you want to check that out, there's links in the description. It'll be links to everything I mention, all of my links in any way. So if you want to check anything out I mention, it'll be a link for it. I've also, just because I'm cool, <laughs> I'm not cool, but I have just started a new hashtag. Um, so it's built on a Roman workbench. Uh, if anybody else wants to use a hashtag, I think it would be pretty cool. Just to show what everyone's building on the Roman workbench, like IE furniture and stuff. Um, there seems to be quite a quite a little community going at the moment, or it's starting to pick up a little bit of uh, momentum there, the Roman workbench community, and I think it's it's really uh, cool. It's just a shame that we don't all live a little bit closer and we could all have a get together. Um, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure we'd be able to um, you know uh, commandeer a, a field. You know, and get together. So it's it's a bit of a shame we're all dotted all over the place. Yeah. Maybe sometime in the future, who knows? So I was uh, wanting to try something um, a little bit different today. I am still going to talk about. Um, I'm actually going to talk about the units here, what I've been building. But I actually wanted to uh, uh, try a little thing, see how it goes. So. If you want to give us a little bit of feedback with this, um, if you just want to hear it or you don't like it, um, you know I would appreciate the feedback. So things that impress me. Um, so this is basically going to be whatever I, catches me eye when I'm on Instagram or YouTube or whatever. It's probably most likely going to be Instagram. Um, Instagram for me, it's it's primarily like woodwork, and that's pretty much. Oh, pretty much all that's on there for, for me personally. Yeah, I only follow people yeah, who would work and I, that's all I look at would work on there. I don't I haven't even got a personal account. It's just like me unplugged woodworking account so it's probably going to be there. So yeah I haven't I haven't got a great deal of people um that I can highlight because obviously I'd be here all day because there's quite a lot that impresses us on um, Instagram. So I think maybe in the coming coming weeks I'm just you know going to grab a, a couple of things that have impressed us by people who I follow or maybe people who I don't follow. So the first one is going to be Diamond Dovetails. Yes, you heard that correctly, Diamond Dovetails. Um, and these were made by Somerset's uh, f Furniture Works uh, by a guy called Jake, I think, I hope. Um, so Jake, if you haven't looked on his feed, um, if there was a king of um, dovetail makers, this guy, <laughs> this guy would be it. Um, so the diamond dovetails, um, it pretty much is what it sounds like. So if you can imagine that all the pins are just like a diamond shape, you know, it's it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, I'd highly suggest, if you, if you like things like that, if you like dovetails or different designs of dovetails, you know, if you like your hounds, uh, your hounds tooth dovetails, maybe like some of the Japanese dovetails, I don't know a while ago, the triangle style, um, go and check Jake out, 
Jake takes it to another level. Very, very impressive. I must admit, the Diamond um, Dovetails, they're not as impressive as the rest of your stuff, but they are still impressive. And for me, I can appreciate how much time and effort like, went into those, you know, that... When, once you see them, you'll you know you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. So that really impressed us uh, this week. Uh, to be honest, every every time you post something, it's you know he's trying out a lot of new stuff. So it's it's I'm pretty impressed. Like every time I uh, I see I see something uh, come up, uh, you know, with his name at the top. So I'm gonna try and leave a, a link um, to his Instagram feed. So go and check him out. I, I don't know why, but I'm having problems when I upload this podcast and it goes to um, Spotify. Some reason all the links stick together. I don't know why that is, but I am going to uh, put the link in for um, Jake. So go and check him out. If you love Dovetails, he's a, he's a man to follow. So I'm going to do one more. Um, and this is the Unplugged Woodworker. Not Unplugged Woodworking. That's me, of course. This is the Unplugged Woodworker. Uh, this is Ron. So Ron does a lot of um, carving in um, the 17th century, I believe. So just recently, he's built himself a room and workbench. Um, basically, he's, he's outdone us. <laughs> he, re- he really has, and I actually wrote that in a comment. He's, um, he's, he's pretty much done what I've been preaching for, like, like quite a long time and I actually I actually kind of preach this in me free ebook again if you want to if you want the free ebook how to build and use a room and workbench it'll be in the it'll be in the description um so I'm, I don't even know if he's read the book um you know who knows but what he has done he's took a room and workbench or 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 his design of a room and workbench and he's made it is his own and that's that's the whole thing this is what I always say to everybody when they, you know they, they say, "What should I do here? What should I do there? What height this? What height that?" And I always say, um, "You know, kind of make it for what you're using it for." And Ron has just done it. He's done an outstanding job. So he's he's really outdone us. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. No other ways to describe it. So what did he do? He added a draw. Um, he added a shave horse. He added a carving um, frame. So the carving frame, that's kind of like a... Um, it's kind of, if you could imagine, like a mini bench. It's got dog holes in the top. So basically when he's carving, you can just tie a couple of dogs in. Uh, sorry, three, three or four dogs in. Um, some wedges and it's, you know, it's obviously clamped in place. And it just basically elevates the work for him so he can sit down. Um, you know, and he he can carve his uh, carve till his heart's content. You know, be, I, I would imagine it would probably be quite comfortable for him. Um, although I don't do a lot of carving, so I might be wrong there. He also built a moxing vase for it, um, and he also built um, like a, a, a cam lock and vase sort of system. I haven't seen the system before. Um, he. Did make reference. I'm sure he made. I, I should have had this wrote down. I'm sure he made reference to a a book. So basically, this this um, cam lock and system or cam cam lock and vice. It is what it sounds like. It's basically like some um, like like cams. So it's if you can imagine like the cams, but the the kind of in the shape of an X. So when you Obviously, it's in the shape of the X, and you've got two, um, you've got two pivot points, you know, which is basically dog holes. So when you push against the the X section or where it marries, that in turn presses against the uh, sorry, that in turn pushes the the two um, the two cam sections, the two rounded sections, and basically that just like like clamps the um, the workpiece. Um, how he demonstrated it was in like a like you know edge planing basically. So I've as I said I've never seen it before, but I think it's you know I think it's quite clever. Um, 
it's definitely something I might want to look at. Um, although, although I am edge planing quite quickly these days with just the way I've got my peg set up. But I still think it's a very, very cool um, thing. And as I said, I haven't seen it before. So just to see what he's done with with the bench, I think it's for anyone that's planning or even anyone that's made a Roman work bench, I, I'd highly suggest you, you check out what he's done because it's quite ingenious, I think. So, you know, he's he's really pushed the boat out and he's he's made, he's made that bench like for him, you know. The, the, like the true essence of it so i'll leave a link for ron i believe ron has a, a blog as well um i haven't had the time to to basically have a flick through the blog um i've just recently discovered he's he's got a blog so um i'm gonna have a dig through that as well so you know give him a follow um and I forgot to mention, how could I forget to mention, he's actually basically like really like done a lot of carving on the bench. So, you know, not as the bench is, you know, not just, you know, functional for him. It's also very pretty and very, <laughs> very decorative. You know, it's uh, it's probably one of the best looking Roman <laughs> benches I've seen. So same again, I'll, I'll leave a link here. Go and check him out. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the shelving unit I've been making. Um, it's not quite finished, but I'm, I'm thinking it should be done tomorrow. Um, it's it's not a particularly long build, or or at least it shouldn't be. I, th- I think the, the one of the things that takes a time is actually fitting the fitting the the hinges and getting everything lined up you know i think that's really the only sort of like issue uh, if if you'll if you call it an issue it's not really an issue is it so this is basically something i've just seen on facebook or was it it might have been google i was i, I believe i was doing a little bit of research um i don't know little bits and bobs about campaign uh, campaign campaign furniture not a great deal, but I do know a little bit. I have seen, you know, little bits and bobs. Um, basically, Chris Schwartz. Um, I think that's the first place I've seen it. And what I was researching was the chest of drawers. Is like the campaign chest of drawers. It's like a, it's like a stackable, like a two tier stackable, uh, you know, chest of drawers. I think that's like really really cool. Um, I've been wanting to build one for like. I don't know, like, it might be pushing on nearly three, four years now, maybe somewhere in that region. Uh, I have got need of drawers, because uh, I, <laughs> I haven't got no drawers in my house, believe it or not. I've got, I've got, um, how many chests? Four? Three, sorry, three. I've got three chests in my house, but uh, no, no drawers. Chest of drawers for my clothes, so I think that would be, um, you know, pretty handy uh, to make. The good thing I like about the chest is that if you make a two tier and you need more storage, you can also you, you could make it three tier. You know, it's, it's just it's it's pretty versatile like that. I mean, obviously there's going to be you know it's going to have its limitations. Um, obviously I would have to test things out, but I think I think you'd probably be probably be able to get away with a three tier. Probably, yeah. Don't quote us on that. So, anyway, I think I was doing the research on that. I'm, I'm, I'm more than sure I was. Yeah, I was after it as well. But um, I come across this uh, shelf. This, this, you know, this. Um, I think it was originally a bookshelf. Mine's not going to be a bookshelf. I think mine's probably going to house um, me trainers. I've got like. A stupid amount of trainers here and all was scattered all over the place so I think um I think that's that's what's gonna happen with that. Um why build a full down one when it's probably never gonna get folded down in its entirety? Um because why not? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> you know I do I do like to try new things. Um I'll yeah, a lot of people probably don't know, but I'm I'm very 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 interested in like furniture like that, yeah, um, like trans like transforming furniture, if you will, um, you know, 
you know, the likes of tables that like double in size or triple in size, you, you know, like a, a coffee table that then turns into um, a dining table, you know, f- things like that. Um, I, I, I haven't gotten round to it, but like there's, there is quite a lot of stuff I want to like explore and, you know, make videos for, you know, like, um, like a pro- like a proper flat pack, um, you know, a piece of furniture. But when I say a flat pack, like I literally mean, you know, there's there's going to be no screws, there's going to be no glue. I mean, it's just going to the joints are going to keep it together. That has got its problems, obviously, with yeah, movement and and whatever else. But I do I do want to give something like that a a, a go. So. With with the chest, uh, sorry, with the shelf. Um, since I've been pushed for time, I didn't really have time to go out um, and get some oak. Basically, I would have had to order the oak, and you know, um, unfortunately, I'm I'm due to travel again quite soon. So you know, it's I'm really pushed for time, and I've been doing courses. I like since I've been back, I've done like um, like five courses, so have been pushed for time um so i ended up going to get some um european redwood um this is quite a blonde um redwood uh, if i'm honest it's it's not particularly great i wasn't really happy with the price i paid for it it was it was 29 pounds after vat um as i said i wasn't happy with the price but uh, it is what it is um it's really soft it it the grade it, it doesn't look great to be honest the it's it's probably been um, grown quickly unfortunately for me there is a there is another wood yard um they they're kind of they're like a mini b and q if you could imagine like a, a mini b and q that's kind of what they are and they had been selling um, European redwood, and this this was quite a red, red in colour as well. It's quite a nice wood. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure where they were getting the wood from, but this was this was uh, slightly harder. This um, this this wood. Um, but you know, I, I think I think a few of the a few of the lumber yards are like struggling to get wood in for whatever reason. I don't know. If that's something to do with. Um, Brexit or or whatever, but you know they're, they're struggling to get it in. So I had to I had to settle for that. Um, obviously, the the first the first issue with it is it's it's going to be cupping. Um, it has cupped. Uh, it hasn't cupped a great deal, but it still has cupped. <clears throat> I've yet to bring it into the house. Um, Obviously, when I bring it into the house, it's going to move some more. Um, I don't know. I don't know if the cup will get any worse, or it'll just kind of keep its shape what it is and just dry, you know dry itself out a little bit more, reduce its moisture. So I'm not really gonna gonna know with that. Um, basically, until it happens, I am hoping with the position I've set the. Um, with the position I've set the hinges um, in the two sides, I've, I'm hoping that's going to kind of help. And obviously, with the with the position of the um, hinges on the shelf section, so yeah, I'm kind of going to just have to wait and save for that. Um, I'm kind of hoping it's not going to cup too much um, I hope, <laughs> I'm hoping things are going to um, you know kind of basically just not cup um, there was one of the boards uh, twisted quite badly um, so that's kind of I couldn't use that for a shelf I'm not sure what I'll use it for it'll, it'll come in somewhere uh, you know at the very least it'll get burnt at the very least so the shape of the top, um, I don't really know why I've done the top, the shape I've done it. I just thought it was a good idea at the time. Um, to me, knowledge, I, I don't think it's very campaign style. Um, 
for for obvious reasons. It's not the style of of the era. Plus, um, it's got a point at the top. Um, the point at the point at the top. I wasn't thinking at all about this, but the point at the top. It's especially with it being like a softwood. It's just going to damage. It's going to dent, and you know, it's it, it's it was just a bad idea. Um, as I said, I am pushed for time, but if I feel I have got enough time, I'm actually going to cut the points off them, um, see what they look like. If I'm still not happy, I am going to, you know, basically put like put a semicircle on the top, uh, see what that looks like. I don't know why I just didn't stick to the to the original design I I seen, you know, I. To, to be honest, it didn't look too bad, but, uh, you know, for for some strange reason. I thought I'd, you know, stick a couple of points on it, basically. Um, but I don't I don't like it. The, the ironic thing about it is I've done it and now I don't like it. So, as I said, I'll have to see how much time I get and maybe I can change that. So, at the bottom, I just put a, you know, a, sl- a slight arc in the bottom or arch or a semicircle, whatever you want to say. So, I just used my little pruning um, saw for this. Um, I had a couple of people comment here. There was somebody commenting on Facebook as well. So, it's this was this was actually sold um, as a pruning saw on Workshop Heaven. I want to say, yeah, it was Workshop Heaven. So, I actually bought it as a keyhole saw um, for when I was doing um, the. Primarily, it was for the tape cassettes. So there's a section, or there's there's a couple of sections of the tape cassette when I build them. Yeah, I drill uh, a couple of holes, and then I basically just cut a square out or a, or a rectangle out. Yeah, so that's what it was originally bought for. But you know, I've been messing around with it over, over you know, over. I think I've had it maybe it's over a year now. So I've been messing around with it, and it's actually quite good with you know, cutting like things out like that. So it, it kind of it kind of acts like a bit a bit of a like a jigsaw if you will. You know, it's it's quite decent. I mean e- even on the oak, um it's not so quick with the oak obviously because oaks are hardwood. Uh, but if you didn't see the video uh, that I posted on Instagram and Facebook, you know, I actually get through it say uh, you know, in the 60, 60 second video or, or the fifty eight second video, I actually cut a full um, a full semicircle out, uh, and then obviously I pick me my spoke shave up, and then the video ends. But it just goes to show you it was quite uh, quick. Uh, obviously, for anyone that doesn't know, the reason that you will cut a, a bit of a semicircle out at the base, this is just to basically create. Um, four points, you know, just the same way, um, you know, like a, a chair or a table, you know, if you're putting things on a on an uneven floor, you know, like a like a square structure on an uneven floor, you know, it'll tend it will tend to rock, um, you know, quite badly. But if you if you've got four legs, there's less chance of that. And then obviously, if you cut that down to three legs, it's just not going to happen. So that's the reason for that. So the construction of the thing, it's it's pretty simple. Um, I think that's probably why I've done it. So obviously, just for the lack of time. Plus, I get to use it for something, you know, rather than just making it for making its sake. So I think with this, it is actually pr- a pretty good for it being simple. Um, it is actually a pretty good exercise for making sure that you. Your end grain square, obviously in the thickness square, and your your width um, ninety degrees as well. Um, you know you do have to take. Well, in my opinion, um, you really should uh, take your time and make sure you get everything. You know, pretty precise. The precise, you know, the precise uh, is a such a word. Or the more precise you actually get, the ninety degrees on your thickness and on your width. The better, you know, the the butt joint's going to be. It's going to mate better to um, the side sections. Um, you know, I think that's one of the main things with this build. You know, it's basically getting everything like ninety degrees. 
um, you know, that's that's going to make or break you. I think, um, you know, it's going to obviously add strength to the structure. Because if you're going over 90 degrees, you know, it's going to have a tendency to rock, you know, and obviously you, you don't want it to rock. Um, so I think that's one of the, the keys for this. I mean, I haven't actually... Um, I haven't actually read the book. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but uh, Chris Schwartz actually has a book. Uh, I think I'm actually going to purchase it. Most probably, um, I might order it when I get back home. Um, I think it does kind of go into the history a little bit, and it's I, I quite like the you know the the whys and and whatever else. Um, uh, Chris Schwartz tends to do tends to do quite good uh, quite good of a job, you know, explaining the history and, and whatever else. So I'm probably gonna do that. So I've totally lost where I was now. I haven't a clue what I was talking about. <laughs> I just went on a tangent there, didn't I? Right, so I'm gonna jump back in here. So um I'm gonna go for the hinges. So Today I had issues with the hinges. Um, I was already aware of these issues, but I still managed to screw it up. <laughs> so, for anyone that doesn't know, if you're buying butt hinges or any sort of hinges and you want them all to be the same, they won't be. Especially tw- if you're buying 12. So... The other day I, w- I was in South Shields, um, I went into Wilkinson's and I picked up 12 butt hinges. So when you pick them up, you look at them, they look all the same. Obviously I know they weren't, I know they're not the same because they're just, they never are the same. There's always discrepancies. So for anyone that's maybe a little bit of a beginner or unaware or just not thinking, even if you're only hanging, you know, hanging like a door, you know, like a cabinet door or something, you might only be using two hinges. Mark out separately with the hinge you're going to use f- for that for that housing, if if you will. Um, so I picked two hinges. <laughs> what I've done today, I picked two hinges out, and I basically joined the two, um, the two. Uh, sections that make up a side section so i got everything lined up um i used uh, some wide technicians tape and that worked actually quite well so i basically got lined up taped it um and that worked well so i put the hinges on um got them where i wanted them centered them where the where the butt joint was um drew around them um you know, marked, like, numbered them, basically, so I wouldn't, like, screw up. <laughs> but I did, I did, so, um, you know, uh, made me knife walls, you know, uh, recessed it out, um, and I, to be honest, I didn't even notice it, so I put it in, there was, like, a bit of a gap on one of them, I was like, oh, God, I wasn't happy about that, um, you know, uh, got it all like I screwed it in, and I'm closing it. And when I'm closing it, um, the two the two edge the two ends furthest away from the hinges. You know, when I'm closing it, they like there was a discrepancy of like what was it? There was was it like about fifteen millimeters. I'm like, how the hell? Do you know what? So I'm like an idiot. I'm I'm like closing, opening, closing, opening. I'm like, what, what's happening? And I'm kind of not paying attention to what I'm doing. And obviously, I've seen it. So, one of the, one of the centers of the hinges was like it was out, but it was out quite a lot actually. Like, yeah, so I've I've clearly got the hinges um, mixed up. So, fortunately for me. I was able to go through the remaining um, 10 um, and basically correct it. So it just goes to show you, you know, some of these hinges are like, you know, they're out that much. So I was able to, you know, find a find a hinge that basically pushed to the center of the, the, um, 
the butt joint, um, and I just I just had to take out a little bit more on the main board, you know. So it wasn't a great deal, but it just goes to show you how how easy it is just to. You know, even when you know, even <laughs> even when you're checking for things like that, just it's so easy just to basically screw it up. Uh, as I said, I was fortunate, and I was you know I had like another ten hinges, so that that was a bit of a saviour the day. So fitting hinges as well, I thought that was a bit um, a little bit weird, just the way I was fitting them today just with the the orientation of the grain and just the way I was doing it typically we obviously when you when you ha, um fitting hinges it's typically to hang some sort of a door it might be a, a living room door the um, a cabinet door something like that for me it is usually it's I don't think I've ever done anything where like on a butt joint where it's been end grain end grain or can't recall ever doing anything like that so that was a bit that was a bit funny with like basically just just uh, making the housing for the hinge um i did use my chisel and then i swapped over to a, a me router plane um it, an, another thing what i noticed when i was doing this was the wood I'm so used to working with oak, um, and this this redwood was so um, it was so soft. You know, actually, there was a couple of times actually, like you know, and I wasn't pressing very hard either, or at least I thought I wasn't. Um, you know, I went on, I went under the you know the me stopped me knife roll with me, um you know, with, with the blade of the, the router plane, basically, you know, it's um, it's funny, it, it took us a little while to kind of um, adjust, you know, t- to the softness of wood. I was all right when I adjusted, it was kind of like, I was just being heavy handed with it, but, you know, it, it just took a little bit of time for me to adjust to that, so that was something that jumped out of us um, uh, quite quickly, which I'm happy about. So the shelves, because there is some cupping and I'm trying to minimise the cupping, I am going to stick some buttons on the shelves where possible. So the very bottom shelf, I'm going to be able to stick some buttons on that. I'm not sure if I'm going to stick two or three on the bottom um, shelf. Um basically have to see how how much these buttons will pull the um you know pull the cutting out i was i was flexing the cutting before and it, it was coming out pretty easy so i'm hoping to get away with two so the middle shelf obviously that's gonna be a, a slotting shelf and that basically stops the thing from falling in on itself same again you'll have two or two or three uh, buttons on that uh, unfortunately the top shelf just because of the construction you can't put any at either side so the only thing i could do with that would be to put one in the center there's room to put like a button in the center uh, I, i'm not sure if it's even worth us doing that um is what i'll probably do is test it out um I'll probably uh, pick the button with the least um, cupping in it, um, clamp the button into place, um, kind of see how it is, and um, kind of make a decision from there. I mean, I don't, the originals, I, I don't know if they had buttons in them. Obviously, I do know they weren't made out of um, redwood, you know, they were made out of um, hardwood. I think there was like a. Um, uh, oak and um, mahogany um, I, d- I don't know if there was ash things like that them's just examples I've seen so yeah I'm going to have to see what happens with the uh, with the buttons personally I am going to add them uh, where I can um, you know it's as I said it's just going to uh, help take the, the cupping out um, and prevent any more cupping should it want to happen 
And for anyone interested, uh, how I'm going to uh, basically fix these uh, buttons is with screws. I got this, uh, I got like a question, I think it might have been on YouTube. Um, I think it was a guy from Norway, um, I, I forget the guy's name now. Um, and he, he was basically just saying, um, you know, uh, I've heard, you know, if you use nails, it's kind of better because the nails can move more. Um, how do you deal with the screws? So with the screws, the only thing you've you've basically got to do is make your pilot holes slightly bigger. So when the pilot holes are bigger and your wood's um, contracting, um, you know, there's basically movement. It's It's getting wider and it's getting shorter. Uh, de that depends where you are in the world. Um, obviously, it depends on what time of year it is and stuff. I mean, here in here in England, in the northeast of England, you will get wood movements. Of course, you do. Um, to in my experience, it's not a great deal. What I tend to find is that when I when I buy killing dried oak, I bring it indoors. It'll expand. Um, it'll expand. It'll do as it, it'll do. It's expanding, and then after that, it typically doesn't move a great deal. Um, I've never really measured it. I really should, but um, to to my knowledge, it's it's minimal. I mean, like millimeters. Yeah, this is killing dried. So my experience with the redwood and with spruce. Um, as soon as you bring it into a house, it will shrink. It will shrink a lot. Um, I kind of quite remember um, what the average is. I think it's somewhere in the region of like quarter of an inch. Uh, for I think that's what I had on um, maybe somewhere in the region of 12 inches. Was it 12 inches? Yeah, so I had like quarter of an inch on 12, uh, on 12 inches. Um, and it did expand back, but same again, it was like millimeters, you know, um, you barely notice it. So I'm hoping everything's going to be okay with that. So when I, when I come to do the, the hinges for the shelves, I think one of the main things is going to be the alignment basically of the shelves and the hinges i think the same again that's gonna that's gonna make make it or break it um i'm probably gonna end up taking a taking a lot of time not a lot of time but i'm gonna end up taking my time um to to basically you know so i don't really mess up because if i misplace the hinge and i've got like a two three four millimeter gap it's it's just gonna really bug us it's <laughs> and i'm gonna get really upset with myself so i'm gonna really really try not to do that L looking at it I, I can't say i can't say how easy that would be to do that you know um so maybe in may i'm gonna have to take like a like a lot of um you know care with that so Going back to um, wood movement, when I do the the centre shelf, um, which is going to be um, a housing joint either end, so basically, if you can imagine the two the two side sections, they are cut in the middle, they hinged, and basically they fold in on themselves, so they fold together. So when you add a, a centre shelf, the centre shelf um, goes into the housing joints and it basically just stops, it It stops the thing falling in on itself. So, you know, you've, you've got like a, basically, you know, it's it's not actually pushing, but if you can imagine, it's, it's pushing it out. Um, you know, when you've got your four hinges, two at either side, uh, you've got your butt joints, so that kind of go anywhere. Obviously, if it tries to come in on itself, you know, it's obviously got that. So with this, I'm gonna try I'm not gonna try and make it a snug fit per se, but I do want it to be kind of where I can push it in and it 
and it's a tight and it's a tight fight, a tight fight, a tight fit. If I'm 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 kind of not making sense here, but basically when I slide it in, I want to be able to slide it in, but I still want it to be like ever so slightly s- snug. Um, again, the reason for this is because I'm expecting it to shrink, and I'm not expecting and I'm not expecting it to go like to you know to go back to its snugness if you like so it has to be able to go in um you know but i don't want it to the point where when it does shrink you know it's going to be loose um again i'm going to notice it i'm going to i'm going to see the gap at the housing joint and it's just again it's just going to annoy the living daylights out of us so i'm really going to try not to do that so with this as well, um, I'm really going to have to chamfer all of the edges, like literally every edge. Um, that's primar- primarily because of the the type of wood I've used. You know, it's it's just going to, if I don't, it's just going to get damaged really easy. I think even just putting shoes on it and trainers, it's, it's just one of those. Obviously, you would take the arises off anyway. I mean... Um, if I was using oak, I would have probably basically just took the arises off um, and brushed some sandpaper against it, probably just to give it like you know a, a very slight round, um, you know, not even noticeable by the eye. I'm not too sure with the originals. Um, I don't know if they were fully chamfered or anything like that, but I think you know, just with a redwood, I think it's it would be stupid not to do it. As for the finish, um, I'm not overly sure. Um, you know, I might I might do a little bit of research and see if I can get anything to toughen the the redwood up with. Um, if anyone knows of any sort of substance, um, I'd appreciate it if you you know drop us an email um, at um, unplugged woodworking um, at gmail dot com. Um, that would be really good. Or leave a um leave a comment on one of my social media platforms that would be awesome if you could do that please and of course i will be editing the video um possibly monday maybe monday nights i'm hoping to get it uploaded um maybe tuesday or wednesday um so if you're interested, you know, keep an eye out for it. Uh, you know, um, there's links and, and whatever else uh, to my YouTube channel. So if, if you want to check that out, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I've rather not on enough um, today. So uh, let us know what you thought about the um, the things that impressed me. Um, do you just want us hear more of that or, or did you not like it? Um, if you manage to grab a couple of minutes, um, you know, leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. And until the next time, I shall speak to you later.